This is a 200 inch pound output unit known as the ES2. Now this can be calibrated to either fail open or fail closed upon loss of power. We're going to pretend that this actuator here has failed in the field and now needs one of our field repair kits for the ES2. The field repair kit shown here comes with the capacitor bracket, of course the gear motor, then you have the power off brake bracket on the top. You've got the spring mandrel here, and you've got the output gear here. And this meshes inside the, the larger gearbox here in the bottom of the, the unit. And what we wanted to do was create something that was simple to replace in the field, or more or less simple. Uh, and today I'm going to teach you how to do that. And I'm going to do it all in less than 15 minutes. For each of the first thing that we need to do is disconnect the power. Okay, so the power here is not connected, uh, but in the field make sure that you disconnect the power. Step one, you're going to turn off the power supply to the actuator. The second step is always remove the cover. You can't even get inside of this thing unless you remove the cover. Step two, you're going to remove the cover, uh, being careful not to scratch this surface at all. This is NEMA 7, and any scratch could jeopardize that surface. Step three, you're going to take your wire cutters, you're going to cut this wire tie here. Step four, using the 7 64ths Allen wrench, you're going to remove the screws that are securing the brake housing to the brake bracket on the top of your your gear motor here. And you can lift it off carefully and try to dump these screws into your hand because they're small. You don't want them to fall down inside the actuator there. And set them off to the side. Uh, in the field you have your, your cover removed. Uh, I like to set all my, my screws and, and small pieces inside the, the cover so they don't get lost. Step 5. There are four wires connected by quarter inch spade connectors to the capacitor. What you want to do is remove the red and the brown spade connectors from the capacitor. In step six, you're going to take a Phillips head screwdriver and you're going to remove the screw that's anchoring the capacitor to the capacitor bracket. Then you can take needle nose pliers, come down in there, and grab the screw out. In step seven, we're going to take a three-quarter inch wrench on the bolt outside the actuator here. This is going to release the spring tension. You're going to hear it whine as you do it. In step eight, you're going to take a Phillips head screwdriver and you're going to remove the screws that are in top of the round spring retainer. Take them out of the spring mandrel here. In step nine, you're going to take a flathead screwdriver and you're going to remove the screw that's holding the lower spring retainer in place. In step ten, simply remove the spring. In step eleven, you're going to remove the remaining three. 8.32nd, one and a quarter inch screws. Next, take the brake housing, set that off to the side, and in this you can take off this gear motor. But before you do, you'll take the 564th Allen wrench here, and there are some small set screws down here on this brake. 
loosen that side, turn around, loosen the other side here, and just slide right off. In addition to removing the brake, I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver into terminal position one and loosen that, as I already have here, and remove the neutral white wire. Your repair kit will look about like this. This is the major part of it here. It's going to come with your capacitor bracket, your brake mount bracket, it's going to come with the wiring and the wire connectors. It's also going to come with the output pinion and the spring mandrel. It's going to come with wire ties, which are going to be putting in place of the ones that you've cut. And it's also going to come with a small packet of grease. Now, the grease is already applied here, but what you'll need to do is, is go ahead and rip open that small packet and, and spread the grease around this bottom area. Okay. In step 12, you're going to take your new repair kit, slide it back down in here, make sure there's no wires underneath it. Then you're going to take the three 8 32nd socket head screws that you removed from the previous motor and you're going to go ahead and secure this secure this unit down here. In step 13 you're going to be putting this wire tie back on these wires that are underneath there. Now this is kind of a challenge to do, so something that's helpful is you take your wire tie and you go ahead and, and you put a good hard bend in it there, okay? In step 14, take the spring that you removed previously, install it back on the mandrel, and take your top round spring retainer and your two Phillips head screws. You can get them started with your fingers if you want to. And go ahead and take your, your Phillips head screwdriver and tighten those down nice and snug. In step 14, you're going to take your lower spring retainer and you're going to take your two inch round head screw and before you put them back in you want to make sure that this lower spring tab down here you can see is behind this fourth hole okay then when you install the retainer it's shaped about like an L so you're going to make sure shaped like an L, you can see here. You're going to make sure that it's facing this way. Bottom of the L should be facing outward, away from the spring tab. And take lower that into place. Sorry if my hands are blocking for a second. Down in there like that. You notice the back is flat. And the spring tab is underneath that spring retainer. Let me just go ahead and tighten that down then. In step 15, I'm going to take the brake hub, facing set screw down, drop it back down over your shaft, set the brake and the brake housing back here on top using your original screws from the failed unit. Okay, everything is good and tight. You can go ahead and take this capacitor. There's 
there's no wires in between there. Line that up with that hole. Take that original screw. You may want to put the screw in the capacitor before you get it behind that piece of metal there. At this time you can also go ahead and take the brown motor wire, the quarter inch spade connector, and reconnect that as well as, well as the red motor wire. Also in this step you're going to go ahead and take the neutral motor wire and neutral brake wires. Just a little bit of a twist together there. Let's send them inside of terminal position one. Make sure that they're both in there and they're both in there good. And you take your small, oh, there it is, flathead screwdriver. And go ahead and tighten down terminal position one again. Okay, in this step you're going to reset the brake. Now if you look in from the top you'll notice that this motor shaft has a flat on it. Now as easy as if you take and you rotate that flat so that it's parallel with this side opening here. Okay, now you can hold that flat in place then you're going to take and lift the brake hub up and you're going to use the 15 thousandths feeler gauge to separate the bottom and the top of the brake so you're holding this in place you got the feeler gauge you've moved this up and then you're going to take your, your allen wrench and come in here and you're going to tighten that set screw against the flat on that on that motor shaft. Now it's a bit tricky. We've managed it. For step 17, what you need to know is you've not altered the cams, so you don't need to mess with those. You did, however, take this mechanical stop out. So to recalibrate the mechanical stop, you're going to reconnect your power supply. Now if you've unwired your actuator, go ahead and wire it back up for this step. Once you're wired up, take your control box and run your actuator to the open position. Now, once in the open position, go ahead and run the actuator to the full closed position. All right. At this point, when you're in full closed, go ahead with your fingers and and turn that set screw or excuse me that uh, mechanical stop all the way until you can't turn it anymore and back that out about one full turn okay once you've done that go ahead and tighten this lock nut down and go ahead and run this to the open position again now, if you don't back this out a full turn before you run it back to the open position, once you've tightened that mechanical stop down, uh, when you're running it to the open, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stop and stall. Okay? It's going to run right into that mechanical stop. So it's very important that you remember that part of the step. The 18th and final step, now that the job of calibrating the mechanical stop is finished, is to simply replace the cover.